All right, Jake and Justin. It's been a long time coming. Written by Wolves have released their brand new album, The Lighthouse. Be sure to go check out, yeah, before, we were about to say the same thing. We did a episode of the Hive Mind After Hours podcast with Mikey, vocalist of Written by Wolves. Go check out that uh, interview slash discussion that we did with him for more insight about this album. Uh, But generally, we didn't talk about our personal thoughts on the album very much in that episode. So if you want to hear our personal thoughts on the album, here we are to share them. Justin, let's, I guess, start with us being very longtime fans of this band secrets both being one of our favorite albums of all time and it's been almost five years since that album this has been long anticipated did it stick the landing um i'm looking through everything and comparing it to secrets yes i enjoyed this album i i will say as a whole it did I like I Secrets yeah. better because Secrets yep. has higher highs. Yep. But I think this is a collective package. I've top to bottom. It's really, really good. Yep. Yeah. So I think we've discussed most of the singles on this album, but um, one of the things that Mikey mentioned in the interview is that he was kind of hoping that with each single release that people would start to piece together how the album's going to turn out. It really wasn't until I listened to all these songs in order for the first time that I really connected the dots between all of the singles and how cohesive of a story that this album actually tells from give them hell to open the album, um, with the very dark tone and like, uh, the music video for that song as well, having like royalty kind of themes to it and like uprising revolutionary sort of vibes to it. Um, it's the album starts out very negative, and just talking about how like mentally you're not in a good place and um like the world around you is falling apart the world around you is burning like disaster please just breathe is like it's a song of like losing someone that's really close to you and then eventually you get to the white house the title track on the album which is a slow ballad of a song and everything clicked in my head the moment that i heard the lyrics of that song um we'll go back to some of the lyrics from the first half of the album but you get to the lighthouse and you get the slow delivery of look for the lighthouse it'll guide you home a beacon in the darkness the light is always on um and just that idea of even through all of the shit that this world sometimes gives us through all of the fucked up things on the news from like natural disasters to corrupt governments and people and whatever the, whatever the hell you think is going on in this world, trying to see the light in all of the darkness around you. I mean, hell, that's the a light in the darkness is the little interlude that comes just before goddess in the lighthouse. The lighthouse is really the song that is trying to serve as like, yes, the world is fucked up, but there is light in a fucked up world. And I feel like this album really sells you on that message. And then you end the album with the stretch of take me home memory and altar, which I feel like hits home the idea of finding the light even more. Like I I feel like I did not piece together how well this album would be uh, cohesively, like how cohesive the story would be as just singles, but it, it really sells the narrative in a hole, in a hole like this. Did either of you two get to this? I assume Jacob, you did because you had a response. Oh, I did. Um, I only got to it once, and it sounds like written by wolves. And I like select songs from written by wolves, so I enjoyed. <laughs> I enjoyed my uh, experience listening to this album. I know you guys are much bigger fans. Yeah, yeah. Than than I or Derek are, but. I I think the, I mean I was I, just, I was just letting Jake on the soapbox of saying pretty much everything I wanted to say, so I'm trying to fill up the space. Yeah, I I, I don't really have any gripes with it. I don't really have any criticisms. Uh, I don't really have any moments of praise either. So 
I I enjoyed it. That's all I can say. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I know your your favorite song, Jacob, was "Demons" from Secrets. Yeah. That's yeah. still true, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any song on here that comes close? Not off of one listen. Okay, that's fair. You know, I, you said you only had. I don't know why I should expect you to have any song on here off of one <laughs> listen. That comes close, but sometimes I just say shit. Um, Justin, since I had my chance on the soapbox to kind of talk about how the back half of the album really ties it together, why don't you talk about how incredible the first half of the album? Because I know some of your favorites are on that first half. Um, I wasn't going to talk about that actually. I was going to talk about the latter half. Okay, go for um, it. So I just want to, uh, I want everyone doesn't care who you are, what you are. Uh, show this to the dog that's in the background, Jacob. Uh, give Wait, fucking write there. the it write the ending a listen. It is the best song off the album. Really? Yes. Your favorite. Wow. Okay. I I I will say this now. I I didn't answer the question wholeheartedly when we asked it in the interview um as we we in during the discussion we ended up talking about what our favorite written by wolf songs were um i originally said burn um because i'm honestly i wanted to get more listens to the album but i also wanted to save my initial reaction for the album for when we talk about it right the ending is such a good fucking song yeah I it's my love, favorite of your songs i love the the shift in the chorus where it kind of it kind of feels like almost i don't want to say generic in the sense that it's like bad but it feels like a very familiar sound and then you get the electronic drop into heavy guitar instrumentals that just comes out of fucking nowhere and it yeah. it's so clean it works super super well um almost like you can't not move when that comes through it's like the um it's like the the instrumentals of burn um really came through pretty well in that song um and right the ending just is a phenomenal song um memory is another one of my my favorites of the non-singles on this um just because i adore the vocal layering on this all throughout it is just like very atmospheric and of being like one of the like lighter songs in the album uh or least emotional driven songs um i think it is like lyrically like one of the best and i i love the the layering all throughout it so I guess to touch on the opening half of the album, uh, Misery is my favorite song on the album as a whole. It was phenomenal as a single when it came out last year. I love the kind of orchestral cinematic atmosphere that it uh, provides. Um, and it also just has a really sick breakdown. Um, it's also, I feel like Misery is the song on the album that delves more into the mental darkness, whereas Burn and Please Just Breathe, I mean, Please Just Breathe is kind of a lot of everything but burn is very much the song on the album that's talking about how fucked up the world is and how you just want to burn everything um so i feel like you, you that's how those two songs kind of tie in and then please just breathe feels like the spiritual successor to to tell you the truth uh which is one of their most popular songs one of my favorite songs there is just such an emotional song to tell you the truth is and um please just breathe uh is like the spiritual successor to that it's got another very emotional music video and emotional message of watching someone you love uh i think in the context of someone that is like on their deathbed or someone that has like let's say someone gets hit by a car and they die on the spot or something like that it's, it's supposed to be like please just hold on i need you just for like one more second to like tell you something like i'm not ready to let you go and again, that's a really powerful message. Um, right, the ending, uh, I think, is another one of those songs that the way I've interpreted that song is that it's a song about how I, I feel like there's a bit of a hinting towards like suicidal ideation on that album or not on the on that song. 
um, where it's like you you want to go out on your own terms sort of thing where like if everything is going to be this bad i at least want to go out my own way and not just let me die to the whims of time sort of thing um and then yeah then you get to the back half of the album that i've already talked about so yeah i feel like there's a lot of really strong lyrical themes and a really strong narrative across the album front to back and instrumental instrumentally sonically even just by themselves a lot of the songs on here stand on their own so yeah written by wolves a, a fantastic follow-up to secrets uh i will agree with justin that i don't think it's it reaches the same peaks that secrets did and i definitely don't enjoy the album as a whole as much but by no means does that mean this album is bad by any means this is one of my favorite albums i've heard all year and um one of the most powerful stories of any album that i've heard this year and it was an absolute pleasure to be able to interview mikey and talk to him about the album after being a fan of the band for so many years so that was really special yeah i definitely see like of of the albums this year this one has like the most emotional weight on it so far yeah um i don't have too much more to add so if we don't really have too much more to say i feel like we've touched on basically every song on here so uh derek i assume you didn't have a chance to listen to this i did not but i want to i want to watch our uh the after hours y'all did and then listen to it definitely i agree a lot of good insight in that episode and for anyone listening to this album discussion be sure to go give the interview we did a listen as well hear from the man himself who wrote the lyrics for this album and had a part in the creation of it 